So I, you hopefully can see my ePortfolio. Thumbs up. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to start here because um, as I was thinking about my presentation and, and this idea of why I designed each page the way that I did or how the whole course developed, I thought I'd start with my ePortfolio because I wanted to emphasize um, kind of this picture that epitomizes my experience in this whole course, the light bulb moments that I had um, frequently. Sometimes it went dim, but <laughs> luckily, like after a week or so or a lesson, you know, the light bulb would go off. And um, I'm sure you probably read this um, quote here that says, you know, the best way for an online instructor to become a better online instructor is obviously to be keep, become an online student. And I can't say enough about that experience for myself that being on the other side after 14 years has really opened my eyes to a lot of things. So as I go through, I'm just going to highlight a couple of things in each of the standards um, for my reflections. Um, it's, you know, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but I did highlight something on each page to hopefully demonstrate that I've actually um, met the standards. Um, of you know a quality online course so the first one is uh, student success which I have to say is always at the forefront of when I'm creating something because especially in the subject that I teach statistics I'm getting these students that tend not to have um, the basic skills to be successful so there are a whole you know like a list I put the list of things um, that prevent students from becoming successful and they include you know information lack of skills lack of time low expectations on from instructors little communication with instructors lack of community um lack of plan like you know where are they going with their education lack of accessibility um and application so sometimes students don't um know why they're learning what they're learning because they don't see the relevance in the real world. So, um, you know, we did this reflection early on and I kind of used that as a guide in developing my course. I'm thinking about, you know, what skills do they lack? Um, how can I make my course one that engages them? Um, how can I address this issue of accessibility? Um, so all of those things kind of lent themselves to the development and design of um, all the pages in my course. Let's see here. Technology tools. Um, what I wanted to emphasize here is, you know, things that I'm using to um, kind of address those things as to why students aren't successful. So the tool, the one tool that's been quite helpful for me is the Show Me um, application on my iPad because the content, obviously it's math, there's a math component. So the show me videos that allow me to write on the iPad and then post them is, is, a, is a tool that has been quite helpful. And I've learned how to use it better with this course because as I've mentioned before, sometimes I would create these long 30 to 40 minute videos, which I thought were fabulous until I read um, a Rate My Professor review that said I was a mess. <laughs> so I am... Um, I kind of took that to heart and used what I learned in this course to, to improve on the, that technology. So that tool is very helpful in terms of the content um, because before I started using that tool, I felt like my hands were always tied. And um, Angela, maybe you understand, you know, trying to write math language and a Word document or something like that is really challenging. So that's been helpful. And then um, this standard talks about you know how we're going to use tools to assess student learning so I just um, listed things such as the discussion board quizzes and exams um, muddiest point discussion board the homework assignments and the at the end with when I show you my sandbox when I um, present the demonstrations of how to solve a homework problem I end with um, now try this problem. So it's kind of like, now you show me based on what I've illustrated or modeled for you. Now show me that you can do it. So I actually direct them to complete an assignment in the homework um, application immediately after they've watched a video. 
So I'm trying to use these tools to kind of collect information on you know, how well they're doing um, how, and how well they're understanding the material. Collaboration. Um, oh, I, I talk about the things that I have and which are new to my course because I have to admit I didn't do a lot of this before. So I start up the orientation with two opportunities for students to get to know each other. So they begin with the uh, what does statistics mean and then where do they see examples of statistics as well as specifically to the field that they're studying. So my hope is that they'll find common ground with each other like, oh, I'm a nursing major or I'm a psych major or didn't I have you in such a class? So it kind of gives them opportunity to first kind of get a sense of what statistics is about, but also more importantly, get to know each other. And then the orientation ends with a growth um, versus fixed mindset. And that um, speaks to the readiness. Um, so of course, with this class, because it has a math component, a lot of students, this is what I commonly hear is, I'm just not good at math. I'm just not good at math. I don't understand it. I've never been good at math. And it goes on and on. And um, starting with this discussion board, the fixed versus growth mindset, it gives me the resource to refer back to. And I can say, do you remember the fixed versus growth mindset and, and this philosophy that if you practice something, you can get better, but if you kind of pigeon your whole, pigeonhole yourself into this idea that you don't understand, you're not good at it, and you kind of adopting this fixed mindset, you're not going to go very far. So that discussion board is helping them kind of collaborate on, they have to talk about which mindset that they tend to lean towards. And I personally will post my own because the first time I took the um, assessment, I was more of a fixed mindset person. <laughs> so I'm going to share that with them so that they don't feel intimidated um, and embarrassed about talking about which mindset they kind of lean towards. And hopefully, you know, they can see commonality amongst their peers and say, you know, I was, I was surprised by this result too. And I do tend to shy away from new opportunities of learning. Um, so again, I start off the orientation with two opportunities where they can collaborate. And um, I just um, indicated to here or highlighted that, you know, when we do provide opportunity for them to interact and connect, it's going to increase their success in the course. Um, at the end of part one, I have created study group sessions where students have to get together and, and discuss, and it is a required assignment. They have to discuss some of the um, material that we've um, covered and then also share study tips. And when I have students um, complete the online homework, I'm, what I usually do, because um, they usually have to turn that on by Saturday, not on Saturday, but by Saturday, Sunday evening, I analyze the data and then see, you know, who did well, who didn't do well. And that enables me to pair them up. So next time we have a group assignment or something that requires them to work with another student, I can put them in mixed abilities and they won't necessarily know that. Um, so that will help them collaborate and, and again, lend itself to creating the community that's necessary for them to be successful. Communication. Um, let's see here. So I pointed out that uh, student orientations and clear expectations as well as regular effective contact are important factors in the development of student success, a sense of belonging to a learning community, um, and increased communication with the instructor. So in my sandbox, I hope you'll see evidence of all this, beginning with the welcome letter that I would send out the week prior to this, the course beginning. Um, attached to that welcome letter will include a welcome video, which um, you've you've already reviewed um, the syllabus and within the syllabus obviously will um, include the course policies. I created a course tour um, but also plan to conduct a web conference tour so the first week of the course I'll, I'll do similar to what um, you did in this course and hold a web conference and give them a little tour of how to navigate through the course and post that as well, record it and post it. But I'll also send out the course tour video that I produced with the welcome letter. Um, other opportunities of, of discussing, I did place here um, the two discussion boards and orientation that I just talked about. 
and how those lend to um, building community because communication between students is really important, not just with the instructor, but also amongst their peers. Weekly discussion boards will occur to you know, keep that um, rhythm going. Group assignments, study sessions, the Q&A and feedback discussion board. So I have a feedback discussion board aside from the Q&A where I ask students to give me feedback not only on the content, but also on the design of the course. And they can submit the, um, an anonymous survey using SurveyMonkey, and I'll show that to you in my sandbox. Uh, virtual office hours, I'm glad to now have that link in my course because um, it always mystified me of, you know, I would see that, I'm like, where does it go? And <laughs> how does one use that? So I'm excited to use that with my students. Um, and I think just having that link on my homepage will, will help them feel the sense where I can reach out to her. And in my syllabus, I indicate that they can make special office hours. But I will be available in the virtual office, you know, a certain amount of time each week um, during the term. Um, in terms of communication on the, my part as the instructor, I feel that, you know, always starting off a new lesson with clear objectives is important um, along with the rubrics and then providing timely feedback. Um, so in my syllabus, you'll see that I indicate that um, they should allow at least seven business days to, for me to give them feedback and that feedback will appear in their grade book. And I plan to use um, either written or audio um, tools to give feedback to students. And again, it's all grounded in the objectives and the rubrics that um, are attached to each assignment. Let's see here, legal, ethical, and safe use. So I, um, this reflection began with posing this question about, you know, why, why are the stakes higher for online courses? And I indicated that it's because, you know, the venue for the, the course, the, the internet is at our fingertips and that tends to make it easier for people to engage in misconduct, <laughs> engage in things that aren't appropriate. So, you know, having clear policies that include information on etiquette, plagiarism, etc acceptable use policies all help ensure that we're using technology appropriately. And then in terms of, um, you know, copyrighted material and providing attributions, which I, I hope I model well for my students so that they know the importance of it um, and will do the same. So Angela had shared the great um, resource of image coder for the Flickr images and then um, the tool that I found on the Canvas community about uh, Creative Commons um, of how you can include that, those attributions within the pages. And I plan to, you know, draw attention to that to my students to say, you know, when we give credit where credit is due, that's the appropriate thing. Um, so moving on to accessibility. I have to say that, you know, I set out to take this course to really improve on, on this um, element. I improved in a lot of other elements, but this was really my main focus. And the reason was because a year ago, when we were getting ready to um, approve our distance education handbook, there was all this talk about accessibility. And you have to understand that my personality, I'm a rule follower. So I need to know the rules and then I will follow them. But I, I, I was not getting this whole accessibility thing. I didn't understand it. And I would go to people and say, what do I need to do? How do I do this? And I recall a conversation with the Academic Senate president, who's also a DSS counselor. And she said to me, um, I said, how do I make sure my course is accessible? What do I need to do? And I'm not sure that she understood it either. And she said, well, there's this um, website that you can run your course through. And I was like, how do I do, well, how do I do that? What's this website name? And <laughs> it was just, it was very mysterious and I felt so ineffective and um, uninformed and I didn't know where to go. And then I would go to the DSS office and say, I need assistance with closed captioning. Can you help me? And they would say yes. And then they would tell me, oh, your, your videos are the wrong format. And so I just kept running into wall after wall and I remember a year ago serendipitously I, I received an email from out one and it said they had recorded a, a web conference on accessibility done by 
Jamie something. I'm so I can't remember his last name. And I remember coming home and I got my iPad and I got on my elliptical machine and I'm watching this and things started to click, but I felt so overwhelmed. Um, but now I understand like these tools that can help me, um, you know, such as the wave evaluation tool that I use constantly. Every time I make an edit, I run the page through that tool to make sure I didn't overlook something. Um, you know, the accessibility checker in Word and Adobe are so helpful. Canvas guys, sometimes I'll say, you know, like just a couple of days ago, I wanted to make sure my tables, which I have to use a lot in stats, um, were accessible. So I went to the Canvas guides. You know, Web Aim, the website has been so helpful. Anytime something comes up as a yellow, red flag, I'm like, what does this mean? How do I fix it? <laughs> and um, it just has really helped me better understand what I need to do. And I feel like I can serve as a resource now to my colleagues because I have had time to play with it. And then um, Angela schooled me on the whole, you know, no alt text for images that are non-instructional. So I've implemented implemented that as well. So here I just listed, you know, that I'm now using um, closed caption videos or creating them using my iPad application. The content pages within my sandbox are all, you know, um, created using the proper headings, paragraph styles, alt text, structure, structured tables, um, and proper links. Um, you know, and I'm no, no longer saying click on this link, <laughs> which I used to refer to. So I've really come a long way in terms of accessibility, and hopefully you'll see that in my, in my sandbox. So now we're on to assessment. And I love this quote by Albert Einstein. Um, I have tried 99 times and have failed, but on the 100th time came success. So I see assessment as a way of, you know, sometimes instructors use assessment as a way of, I don't know, punishing students. Um, or kind of conveying that they don't get it. Um, I wanted to kind of flip that idea and just be able to give students opportunities to be successful and that it may take multiple times. So using the model in this course of being able to take quizzes uh, multiple times, it, it had an impact on me. So now the learning quizzes that I have at the end of the sections, um, they're little learning checks that they can uh, attempt multiple times and um, it kind of gives them a sense of success, um, but also is reinforcing what they've just learned. They may not re recognize that because they're often just focused on point accumulation, <laughs> but they're actually accumulating more knowledge when they get something wrong and they get to try it again. So kind of lowering the stakes, I think is very helpful. And I put here, you know, one size doesn't fit all, <laughs> even though that, that's a very common phrase. So I try to alter the way that I assess my students using discussion boards, learning checks, homework assignments, the summative assessment, which will occur at the end of each part, and then using group um, assignments. So again, giving students multiple opportunities to be successful because they, they don't have just one major exam or two, like a midterm and a final where they have to be successful and those are the only opportunities that they can convey that they understand the material so having multiple opportunities i think will lend itself to their success um that was assessment data collection so kind of kind of along the same lines um using data to drive um my decisions as an instructor so the muddiest point is a really important assignment because there I will quickly um, learn, you know, what they are understanding, what they're not understanding, and it'll allow me to make quick course adjustments where I can reteach something very quickly before we have that large summative assessment. So I can get um, glean information more quickly, and then that obviously will help um, me alter things for subsequent semester. So if students in the muddiest point, if many of them are saying, I really don't understand this concept of inferential statistics, um, I know that I have to hammer that home a little bit more and in maybe different ways. And I don't have to wait till the next semester to address that. If I can find that out early, again, that's going to help them when they get to the point where they're ready to do their own homework assignments. Um, the learning quiz is obviously everything's chunked into smaller components so 
they quickly get a sense of whether or not they understand it, and I also get a sense of whether they understand it. So using a lot of formative and summative assessments along the way are quite helpful. Um, let's see here. And then the Q&A um, and course feedback discussion boards um, and the anonymous survey that they can complete um, are gonna allow me co to collect um, qualitative data to make adjustments um, that may be necessary. Professional de development, I can't say. So in addition to having access to instructors like yourself and, and just been, I feel like I'm a part of the At One family now and my um, colleagues uh, in the cohort, I can't speak enough about um, the professional learning network. When I first got the email from At One, I ignored it. <laughs> and I think it came through our campus as well. Um, and now it's like my best friend because I've gone on there, especially using um, lynda.com to learn about things such as Canvas. So they have great uh, videos, Canva, Prezi, Camtasia. I have on my um, list a refresher course on SPSS because I'm going to develop the lab for this stats course. So I feel like having that access is, is invaluable because we're all busy and it's nice to go to conferences, but this is a tool that I can access at any time, whenever, based on what my needs are. You know, I need to know how to use Canva. Again, I had shared earlier that when I first looked at Canva, I was like, I don't get it. I don't understand this. How am I supposed to use this? How is this going to help me? And um, after watching a quick little tutorial, I was like, the light bulb started going off. I'm like, oh, now I understand what I can do with it. And I didn't have to wait for you know, someone to put together a course, it's there, it's, it's accessible for me at any time. And something that I've been um, kind of sharing with others, you know, referring them there so that they can also have unlimited access to these um, professional development resources. Finally, standard 10, um, navigation. So I created the course tour video, um, again, just kind of uh, getting students used to what the layout looks like, because um, every course is obviously going to be very different. I created the home page with shortcut buttons to kind of uh, set the structure of the course. The next team, um, well, I think I should give credit to Lene for that next team. No. <laughs> <laughs> so there's instructions of um, you know how to get to the next page, how to progress through all the content pages. Um, I begin every learning module with objectives and to-do list, and I help. I think that helps with the navigation because they know that this is a pattern of um, how the course is going to evolve. And then end of module overview, um, and then with little message that I'll see you next week. Um, and then the use of tabs within content pages has helped me um, kind of uh, illustrate how the navigation within my particular course is going to work. All right, so from here I'd like to just walk you through my sandbox and hopefully you'll see um, evidence of the things that I just talked about. Again, here's the first page that students will land on. Um, here affirming that they're, they're in the right place. Um, I took your feedback to heart and included a little statement about, you know, welcoming them, um, letting them know that they, by the end of this course, they will be statisticians and um, that they don't need to fear the fact that this is a math class because we're going to use math and it's not the focus. In fact, I, um, I often tell my students this course is unique because it's merging math with words. <laughs> So, um, you know, they have strengths in either of those areas um, and they recognize that one area is going to need a little bit more development than the other, but just trying to minimize the anxiety they feel, I think this was a good piece of advice to include that um, early on. Include the course description, learning, um, student learning outcomes, and then my buttons down here of taking them to different areas. In my course tour, I emphasize, I go through all of these with them, but I emphasize on day one to make sure that they start here. And then we enter into the course orientation, again, the structure of the orientation objectives, again, trying to clearly communicate what the expectation is, 
um, so that they're successful because when students don't know why they're doing something, why they're completing a particular assignment, um, they're less likely to be successful. And then reminding them that we have a to-do list, these are the things that they need to complete. Um, I will also, um, on a weekly basis, post an announcement reminding them, you know, this is what we're doing and these are the things that you need to complete. And we go through, you know, orientation of how to use Canvas because, again, if um, we recognize that, let me just go back for a second, that um, not only do they need to learn the course content, but they need to learn how to use this new tool, whether it's the internet to take an online course, but more specifically, Canvas in particular, this new learning management system. So it, it'll be new to our students starting spring. Um, when I go back into the classroom in the fall, I probably will get students that have never used Canvas. So it's really important for them to understand how to use this technology so that they're not overwhelmed with all these different layers of learning because what I, we really need them to do is focus on the content itself. So um, we then go into an online basics and readiness um, page. Again, the, the um, videos which are also included in my welcome video to kind of um, get them to recognize that even though their friends have told them that online instruction is easier um, to make them realize it's not it's a lot more work and again just communicating the expectations and communicating the time that it will take to be successful is important for them to be successful so the inclusion of this and also um, the inclusion of these videos and the welcome um, email that I send out to them, I think is important to convey that this is going to be work, um, but also supporting them, encouraging them that they're capable of, of this type of work. The, um, this page um, indicates that the course syllabus is located over here and includes these things. Um, and I'd just like to take you over there for just a second. So here they um, have access to the PDF form, and then I embedded it because I'm a visual person, so I think it's helpful for them to have this visual um, access to the um, course syllabus. And obviously it follows that normal pattern of information about myself, the course, the course, um, student learning outcomes, objectives, required resources, so, um, you know, Canvas, they're going to have access to Canvas. I listed the technology and software that's required and that they can consult these um, links um, because all of these things are accessible on campus if they themselves don't have them on their personal computers. The textbook, um, the required online homework access, how to purchase their textbook, um, other tangible resources, such as um, the, the calculator, course policies. And here um, I include, you know, what the expectation is in terms of time, which is important. Again, conveying to them, this is the expectation, this is the required amount of time that you, you should expect to um, spend in this course. And just being up front, I think, is, is is helpful to them because they can start to arrange their lives appropriately so that they will be successful. I include what um, you know participation looks like, what it includes, all the other policies, um, information on grading, and here I do indicate you know that I to allow me at least seven days to, to return their assignments, um, and that they will receive a notification by email when grades have been updated and that the comments with, um, about their assignments will be included in the gradebook. Communication here, I um, begin with what they should expect from me in terms of how I will communicate with them. So participation in discussion forums, and I mentioned the Q&A forum. Um, other ways of communicating, the announcements, discussion boards, email. Here I, I included um, kind of a structure or basics of what emails should include. And it, it tends to be that, you know, students, because it's online, going back to the accept, acceptable use policy or what's appropriate um, uh, 
um, behavior online, they often say, hey, hey, professor, <laughs> um, all kinds of, of things. And so I always try to um, redirect them to, you know, go review what you should include in a proper email. And I myself, unless I've met them personally, I usually refer to them by their last name. Um, just to kind of model that um, that this is a professional setting and they should behave that way in preparation for, for the work environment that they're going to enter. Virtual office and then um, some more information on policies that include netiquette, plagiarism, copyright, misconduct, which, um, you know, I, I, maybe we can talk about after, but this is interesting because it really is it's from the college um, catalog, um, but it doesn't really lend itself perfectly to online instruction, and I think it's something that our institution needs to revisit. And then I have um, links to student support services because, again, as I pointed out, uh, as um, barriers to student success, sometimes it includes information and then resources. I try to tell my students that the successful students are the resourceful ones. They aren't necessarily born um, superiorly in, in smarter than everyone else, but they know where to find the answers or they also know where to find the help that they need. So I have um, DSS support, Academic Success Center, which has recently luckily developed a good tutoring program for um, behavioral science statistics because before we only had math-based statistics tutoring. And so, it was, in fact, some of um, my students that spearheaded that, so I can now refer them there and know that they're going to get the appropriate help that they need. Veteran services, um, the online writing, and then career um, services, career, excuse me, um, counseling and career advisement. Because again, one of the, in that list of barriers, it included um, a lack of a plan, like I, I'm not sure where to go, or what I'm doing, or why I'm taking this course. So I want them to have access to those things. And then I end the syllabus with technical support of where they can go on campus. And then because of um, the use of Apply, I included support website for that tool. So we can go back to the orientation after they've looked at the um, syllabus. They now have, um, are asked to update their profile, have a rubric of how that assignment um, will be graded. Again, this lends itself to building community because updating their photo, you know, becomes more personal. Um, and again, they, they can develop this sense of belonging um, when they can visually see someone and read the words that are attached to that person. Notifications, and then they have instructions of how to update their notification. And this is all purposeful because they're going to have to do an activity um, soon. Course communication, which includes email. Again, here I um, reinforce what proper email looks, what a proper email looks like. It's information on how to use discussion boards within Canvas, and then end with the discussion board etiquette video from YouTube. And all of that um, is helpful for their first discussion board that they need to complete. So the overview here, I, I just indicate that um, the purpose, I, I like to use that word a lot. In fact, when I start my videos, I say the purpose of this video is to, you know, illustrate and I, I try to hit the objectives of whatever we're covering. And I try to do that in the assignments as well because as a learner, I always want to know what's the purpose of this. And um, so I point out that the purpose of this first um, assignment is to build a community of learners as we go through our journey of learning about behavioral statistics and, um, and also get to know each other. So they have to watch this little video and then they answer or respond to these questions here. Um, again, allowing them to see common ground or develop common ground with their peers um, so they'll get to see what majors are represented in the course and um, examples of statistics in those majors and also in their life. The video um, includes um, 
information, how we don't even realize how statistics are used so readily in our lives from, you know, the movies we select on Netflix or anything we Google um, on the internet. So I, my hope was for them to kind of see the relevance of statistics. So again, once they make the connection to the real world, then they're more likely to be successful. And here I included kind of overkill, but you know, where they can access the rubric because it won't always um, be visible from the assignments. So I'm letting them know that this resource up here um, gives them access to the rubric because in other assignments, um, I just say that they can use the, the gear icon to access the rubric. So I'm trying to, as best as possible in the orientation, expose, to, expose them to many different elements um, so that they understand how to get through Canvas or use Canvas appropriately. Then after they've done you know, a little assignment again, and from that assignment, I get some information about are they able to use the discussion board effectively? And are they starting to make connections with one another? Here are the course policies. Obviously, they were already um, presented with these in the syllabus, but here they are again, which is important. The repetition is important. And then hopefully, at least the goal of designing this page in this manner using the tabs is for easy access. So. You know, they've got uh, some reason why they're, they're going to miss a week of class. Um, they can go and immediately find out what the consequences of that are. Um, you know, they're trying to decide about staying in the class or dropping, whatever it may be. But hopefully these tabs make it easier. And in the course tour video that I, uh, I made, I um, point this out that some of the pages will say view all tabs so that they don't skip. And then also I've reinforced that by saying, you know, instead of hitting the next, go to the next tab. So I've tried to, you know, let them know in different places that this page is a little unique and different and that they should expect those pages um, in the chapter content. And then I again have um, access, and these are all links for students to go straight to those um, websites at Southwestern College. And I just find that this is, uh, you know, very easy, even though it's on the syllabus here, they know support services. And if I have a discussion with them and say, you know, you, you might want to go to the Academic Success Center um, if you're having some challenges with a particular mathematical concept. And I can refer them here because, again, I want to develop this sense of them, you know, they're resourceful. They know how to find the information that they need. And this page, I think, kind of facilitates that, enables them to develop those skills. And then I have another discussion board. Again, the purpose is to, and I say, continue building um, this community of learners. And um, the, the discussion board videos that I select are all you know, with a, a, a very specific purpose. So here, again, because it's a course that includes math that a lot of students don't feel strong about, um, this concept of a fixed versus growth mindset is really appropriate and um, I think helpful, especially when they come to me and say, I'm just not good in math, as I had discussed earlier. I can always refer them to this video and say, you know, you should go back and watch that video. And I, I'm hoping that it will resonate with them and they recognize, you know, if I just practice, you know, I can develop that growth mindset. And the video talks about how, you know, students who demonstrate characteristics of a growth mindset are more successful. So I'm kind of doing a couple things. I'm assessing their readiness um, because I do see either holding a fixed or growth mindset as being ready for this particular course because of the content, including math. So I'm kind of getting the sense of how they're going to approach things. Are they the ones that say, I just don't know how to, and I, and I can't, I can't, I can't? Or are they ones that are, you know what, I, I think I can do this, and I think if I implement these strategies, I'll be okay. So it's good for me to kind of get a sense of the makeup of the course in terms of you know, are they heavily fixed or growth mindset students? And as I mentioned earlier, I would post my um, results as well so they're not embarrassed or intimidated by doing this particular assignment. And again, I'm hoping that that will 
lend itself to building um, that community. We started in the first discussion board and um, in a positive and supportive way. So again, that, that video is serving two purposes, assessing the readiness and also um, building community. Then I have information, specific information on how to register for um, the online homework um, program and indicate here that they must do a systems requirement check to ensure that Applia can run on their computer. So this needs to all happen before the next assignment um, and within the orientation occurs. And the nice thing about the publisher is that they give students free access to the ebook and the homework application for three weeks. So we can all hit the ground running. So the students have the option to buy a, a loose leaf copy of the textbook or the ebook, um, but everyone can register without payment and can start working on their assignments and their records will be saved as long as they pay for the resource within um, the three weeks then everyone's okay. So I stress this because again, this lends itself to their success. Before, if I was just using textbook that they had to buy, um, you know, it may be weeks before they get it. And they get in this course where you cannot get behind and we really hit the ground running. So it is kind of a nice uh, feature that regardless of what your financial situation is, you can have access to the ebook for free for three weeks. And usually by, you know, within those three weeks, students will get their financial aid or whatever it is, or, you know, some students say get paid every two weeks, it's not payday, whatever. Um, I think that that helps. And then it, that um, page is building for what, what's to come. So here is information on how students can use the assignments and assessments within Canvas. So I'm kind of teaching them, this is how you do this, and now an activity. Show me that you can do it. And this um, assignment is specifically um, helping me assess their readiness skills, their basic math skills. Students have to complete um, college algebra before they get into this class. But for some, it may have been that they took their algebra class years ago. So a semester ago sometimes is long enough for them not to have that um, you know, information um, ready to go for, for this class. So it's a math skills and the math assessment appears in the appendix of the textbook. So they will have registered for Applia, they'll have access to the ebook, and now they can go to the um, appendix and take this quick little math assessment to ensure that they're ready um, for what's to come. By chapter two, we're already starting, to, well actually end of chapter one, we're using summation notation, so they have to um, demonstrate that they're ready to go. And this um, assignment just says, take the assessment, and then the assignment includes, and I put an example of um, the five sections that they are tested on, and then I want them to identify any section, highlight any section that they scored less than 80%, and I remind them of how to calculate a percent, <laughs> percentage. And um, I think this will help reinforce um, you know, I need help in this particular area. And so I tried to convey to them that it's good to know this right off the bat. And we have the Academic Success Center and you have me and you have your peers um, to make sure that you're going to be okay as long as you get the help and access the resources available to you. So it kind of um, does a couple of things. It, it shows, you know, the readiness skills in terms of math, it'll illustrate if they can use this submit function, it can create a document that can be submitted um, using the proper labeling that I've provided, and then I have a rubric of how this assignment will be graded. And this, you know, um, if we run the accessibility, I was really happy to finally figure out how to do a proper table um, within Canvas because I was struggling with that for quite some time. So using the Canvas uh, community website was helpful and finally, I think, mastering that. Then um, they're asked to send an email. 
And uh, when I started this course, then I think I sent Lene an email directly to her and she said, oh, this would be a great question for the Q&A. You know, I started to recognize the benefits of using Canvas and especially the email function within Canvas because when our campus started talking about regular and effective contact, regular and effective contact, and that we would be evaluated on that in terms of accreditation, I was bogged, my mind was boggled by like, how are they going to have access to my Southwestern College email? Like, how would these you know, the accreditation site visitors access my email and it was just really hard for me to get my mind around and now I see that this you know using email within canvas helps us create that record that document of regular and effective contact any communication that you have with your students is all there to be um, you know accessed or to serve as evidence and so I was really happy to see that and kind of clicked with me of how important it is to ensure to tell students that you know, don't send emails directly to my Southwestern College email use canvas because again it will help provide that record to illustrate regular and effective contact and as we know regular and effective contact lends itself to their success that if they're engaging with their instructor they're going to do better so in the email, I've indicated that they have to entitle it with my first Canvas email, so they're getting practice with this. And in the body, they have to say, I've done these things. And I've provided links back to those pages or resources, just in case they've just been moving along, nexting their way through <laughs> the content pages, and not necessarily reading the syllabus and not updating their notifications. So here I'm saying, you need to send me an email and in that email affirm that you've done all of these things um, because these are all important and you shouldn't just skip over them. So again, all of the previous pages kind of built towards, now show me that you can do this, an activity um, that will, you know, give me a sense, you know, that I might have students saying, I don't know how, I'm, how to do this, but also reinforcing the necessity of having the proper technology ready to go so that they can complete the assignments um, that they're going to jump into in the first week. Next, um, we end the orientation unit with uh, a quiz. And uh, again, when I first created this quiz, I had it, I was timed and um, they could only take it once. And then as I started to evolve a little bit and recognizing, you know, students need um, especially early on, um, increased opportunities for success. They need to feel confident about their skills. And like I said, you know, they're often just seeking out the um, points, you know, and they're just, I want to accumulate more and more points, but um, to make it into a, a positive experience and, and not have negative consequences. So I'm just going to click on a couple things. Again, the questions were all designed based on what they were exposed to. And I'm just clicking on answer so you can see what the feedback um, looks like. And um, to show you that, that that's built into all the quizzes that when they take their quiz, you know, they get certain feedback, what was right, what wasn't. Um, and again, I think that's that's helpful for the students because they've been exposed to the information, but now it's being reinforced. Um, so whether if they get it right, great. They they come, they were able to understand it the first time around. But if not, here's another chance, and they can keep taking this quiz until they until it's reinforced and they understand um, the material that has just been presented to them. So once they um, have completed that, I've indicated again, you go to the next, and now we're moving into the end. And I end, again, the basic structure will be that they end, um, you have this, this kind of page that says what they've covered. And this is coming straight from the objectives that we begin with. And then how did we do that? How did we master these things? These are the activities that we engaged in. And this is coming from the to-do list that was presented at the beginning of the learning module. Then we move into part one. And in my um, orientation um, or tour, course tour, 
I explain this to them, that the course is broken up into four parts. Again, just trying to, to give them as much information so they know what's coming, how the structure works, um, again, just to support them being successful. And I let them know that, you know, the part one includes the work on these four chapters and that each chapter serves as a prerequisite for the um, subsequent chapters. And in the video, I indicate that the orientation is a, is a prerequisite to chapter one. So they have access, but they can't complete work in those chapters until the previous chapter, the prerequisite chapter has been completed. Then I have objectives for the, um, so these are very general objectives because they're specific to these four chapters, but then each chapter breaks up those objectives into smaller components and then the to-do list. And here you'll see that we end part um, one, which covers four chapters with a group study session and then a sum summative assignment, which is their, ma their first major exam. And again, the structure continuing with chapter one learning objectives and the to-do list. And here I, I say that you know, the learning objectives, now we've taken that one objective for chapter um, one, and now we've kind of broken into smaller components. And that they're all, that their purpose is all to help feedback into the overall student learning outcomes. Again, you know, hammering in the purpose of why we're learning these things and referring them back to the, the overall SLOs, which I have a link here back to the homepage where they, were, where they first appeared, and then our to-do list. And then um, the structure continues or is, is set here in this chapter where they're um, referred to reading a certain section in that chapter and then the lecture. So the lecture is either going to be a video or text. And in this first lecture, it's, um, I introduce them to some elements of the textbook, which include learning checks in the textbook, but then I also have separate learning checks within Canvas. And I uh, use these images and I tell them that um, this course, is, the information is cumulative. And unlike maybe some disciplines where they can skip and maybe they're absent and they can come back and still do well, you know, if they miss something, they'll quickly find that they'll ha they have gaps or holes in their knowledge. And so reinforcing the importance of one chunking information, um, you know, into smaller bits, that, that's helpful. And then that each little bit helps develop this foundation of their knowledge. And um, I use the metaphor of, you know, they're kind of creating this house of knowledge. And if they neglect to establish a firm foundation, which really is part one of the course, chapters one through four, the foundation for everything else, that their house is going to look pretty shabby. <laughs> they're not going to um, have a, a structurally sound house. Um, if they neglect to take the learning checks, whether while they're reading or um, during the course within Canvas. Um, and so I try to hammer that home. I also have, um, I don't think I need to play this, but uh, an image of uh, puzzles in a key. And my point being that I really hammer home this idea that um, I will always present things as the purpose of this is to blah, blah, blah. Like similarly, when a video is presented, this is what you're going to learn in the video. And uh, for them to start developing that kind of language as well, and I tell them the key to learning statistics is that you ask yourself, what is the purpose of this? What is the purpose of standard deviation? What does it do for me? And when they start thinking in those terms versus what the tendency is to memorize, a definition of standard deviation that's not very effective and doesn't lend itself to success but to focus on what does it do for us or what information does it convey so I, I, I try to train them early on that um, memorizing things isn't going to get them very far that they really need to understand the function or purpose of these um, statistical concepts and techniques and again, I try to reinforce that with my language of the purpose of this video, the purpose of this lecture, or purpose of this assignment, and that hopefully helps, um, you know, cultivate this, this um, level of success. So then, again, uh, this video, I, I took a lot of the um, 
figures um, that are scattered throughout the text, you know, and they, they're referred back to in the, in the content um, and tried to summarize them for the students because, again, this chapter is very essential. It's, it's very heavy in terms. And if they don't understand the terms, um, it doesn't matter if they can master the math. Because again, as I said, this course is unique and it merges, you know, words with math. And um, if they can't express verbally what standard deviation is or what inferential statistics is, whatever it may be, then they're not going to get it. Even if they can com compute something, um, they'll have that disconnect. So I try to use the visuals to kind of support um, what they've already been exposed to in the text and doing it more like, um, succinct way, then, you know, they'll have a learning, a quick little learning check. Um, I, I, these will be no more than five questions, so maybe three to five questions. And again, they'll have feedback um, when they submit, and they can take these multiple times as well. So I try to model this after the, oh, look, I got them all right with randomly selecting. <laughs> Yay, me. <laughs> So again, that illustrating, you know, the formative assessment, using that data to determine if they were, um, if they, if I presented the information um, sufficiently, if they understood it sufficiently. So it's good to have those, and again, in chunked little areas. Um, here I'm, I'm leading them into a text lecture. Um, so again, they have to read, and then they're going to view the lecture, which begins with this. Um, Information in, in it's very important chapter one they they develop a good understanding of the different data structures or research methodologies whether we're working with a correlational study or an experiment um, and then if that experiment is using a true independent variable or a quasi independent variable it's a concept that students struggle with a lot and so I wanted to use a couple of things to help reinforce the information which include a, a visual video a link to a different um, site, and then the text that I've created myself to, I, I see it as I've um, kind of presented what they read in the book in a more digestible manner. Um, I think it, the textbook we use is really wonderful, but I kind of wanted to bring it down a level in terms of make it easier for them to understand. And this is coming from what I would normally do in the classroom, like the way I would express things or lecture on these particular topics. So I wanted to kind of use a variation of things to help them master this, these very important concepts because the discussion boards in all subsequent chapters will focus on, are you able to identify the hypothesis? Are you able to identify the um, independent, dependent variable? If we're working with an experiment, is this a quasi-independent variable? All of these things will continue throughout the chapters. So I want to make sure they have a solid foundation in those concepts. Um, and then this, again, the use of tabs, um, helping them navigate through the material a little bit easier. And then also the chunking, right? So they get through this, oh, it's, you know, they have to go to work. Now they can come back to this. So it, it, I think it lends itself to um, allowing them the time they need to review the material without being overwhelmed with a really long page, which originally that's what it looked like. It was just all of these pages were on one page, which wasn't conducive to um, their, their abilities of comprehending the material. Lisa, I hate yeah. to interrupt, but yeah. uh, our one hour um, is time is up. And you have such a rich course. You have so much. We could spend hours going through this with you, and, and we would love that. Mm -hmm. But. <laughs> Because we have other people scheduled as well. Yes. Okay. What I do want to do is give you an opportunity to um, kind of give us that last overview and then a little bit of opportunity for us to do some question and answer. Okay. So sorry. I'm so sorry to tell That's you that okay. the time is up, but, um, but I do want to hear, you know, your, your kind of concluding remarks before we move into question and answer. Okay. Um, and I'll, I was going to go over this discussion board because um, I want to show it to you and I'll use it as, as a gateway to my concluding remarks. So having students, giving students the ability to comment on um, the course, I think is really helpful 
because it, this will be my, I, I, even though I've taught 14 years online, I see this as my first official online course mm -hmm. um, that has been developed appropriately. And um, I want to know what students think of it. So having this, it's a discussion board, but I also have them, um, I give them the opportunity to do anonymous feedback using SurveyMonkey so they can fill this out. And I can glean really important information, especially the first time I use this. Um, so this course has been, you know, I, I can't say enough <laughs> wonderful things that, that I have uh, learned um, to ensure that I'm going to provide my students a high quality online experience. And that's it. I don't know what else I should share, but you, if you have questions. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so um, first, I have pages and pages of positive feedback for you as well. Um, you've just done an exceptional job. And, and I know that you've credited before the fact that you're on sabbatical as um, mm -hmm. the, the reason why you're able to spend so much time developing that. But even for someone on sabbatical, it, you've really done some beautiful work here that um, points to um, how seriously you're taking this project mm -hmm. and um, just you know a model for uh, other people developing a, a course. And so I, I kind of want to put that out there. Thank um, you. you talked a lot about um, scaffolding your student success by introducing them to the tools and to the ideas, so creating that foundation. And um, I would just like you on the module page, mm -hmm. kind of walk us quickly through how how you've kind of visually set up the unit, um, the content unit, so that students get that um, that sense of um, flow to your unit. It's something that you discussed the other day, and I just I want to capture it for posterity. I'm sorry, to, uh, so, um. so I think, you know, from our conversations that um, you've been very, very um, specific and focused on how you set up the module. Like there's a plan for how you set up the module. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to kind of hear you talk about that plan since we can see it from the module view. Like, what you're expecting your students will do and how they'll spend their time and how they'll know um, what it is that, that they're tasked with. How will I convey to them overall? Is, well, sorry. not how, because I think you've already made that clear, uh -huh. right? So you said that you've got, the, you've got the orientation unit and you have the to-do list at the beginning of your unit. Mm -hmm. I'm saying visually from the modules unit, just walk us through how your students will see that in the way that you set up the module. Because I think that it supports it as well. It's one more layer that supports that. So I'm a student, I land on your modules page, I look at this. Uh -huh. Oh, this. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, okay. So um, I'm sorry, I was just, I am in my tour video, I explained to them that anything that's on the left are, are content and things that are indented are things that they need to do. I'm not sure if I'm addressing your question properly. So any learning checks and discussion boards will be indented um, to kind of illustrate that these are things that need to be completed and things that are on the left um, are content or informational um, pages. And so is it what, is the whole course one giant module or did you chunk it up into other pieces? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, the, the, I'm trying to feed you a really good question. I know. That I <laughs> you. I'm a little slow. Um, so part one, you know, so the first module is chapters one through four. Um, and then I have a, you know, part one reviews. So this shows that this is the end of part one. And then the next part would be part, part two. And I do explain it in my video to the students. And I also show them, you know, that they can minimize these things so that when we, you know, get to part three, when the, the list of module pages is quite extensive, they're not overwhelmed. And um, when they begin the course, 
these will be closed in this way so that they aren't overwhelmed and they can focus. Similarly, chapter one would be um, um, condensed and I would advise, you know, advise them to do that, allowing them to open and to see, but I think that's a little overwhelming visually uh, and mentally. So, um, you know, this part one includes all this, but obviously it extends. And I think that they will be able to see that. And I, I tried to explain that um, in my course tour video. Excellent. Thank okay. you. You've done such a deliberate job of it. And um, it, it's a great lesson for other people to be deliberate about the way that you're designing your modules and make choices that make sense for your students. Mm -hmm. And you really did a, a beautiful job of that. So. Thank you. Uh, Angela, do you have a question? Oops, you're on mute. <laughs> Maybe she's on the phone. No, I always have it on mute. Oh, okay. well, it gets loud in here. Um, it is loud in there. And appar apparently, I talk really loud too. That's what they tell me. So, um, <laughs> I don't notice. Uh, but I don't have any questions because Lisa and I've been in her course a couple times. So, yeah. um, and thank you for for the helpful feedback that you gave along the way. You're very welcome. So I love so many things and. Um, I just, so I make these notes about all the things I love, like Linnea, <laughs> and then think if I have to teach a math class again, I'm totally putting that, oh, I'm using that with my kids at home. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> my, my daughter is um, notorious for, I hate math, I'm not good at math, I'm never going to be good at math, I don't understand this, you know, so we need to have a little talk about growth mindset, I think. Yeah. <laughs> We all do. We all do. Right. And it, it's just so easy to get into that. And um, as a teacher that taught online for eight and a half years without ever taking an online course, um, I really liked your quote that you had from that. It was from a book, right? Yeah. Um, um, well, it appeared in, I believe, one of our early, early lessons. Mm. Yeah. And, um, and when I took OESP the first time, like back in May, I was like, where has this been all my life? Yeah. Like how should anybody ever be even allowed, allowed to go online yeah. without even at least taking a snapshot of this course or something? Yeah. Because I, I think, you know, especially when I started doing it, well, that was in like 2004, 12 years ago when I started teaching online and it was fake it till you make it. You know, there was no, <laughs> nobody said they were going to teach us about it. It was just make it work. Come on. It's just like doing a regular class, right? Just put all the content in there. Yeah. So. yeah, and it's not like that. Well, I have another question that if Angela doesn't, um, which is, whenever we conclude this, first of all, when we see it, um, one of our candidates that's done terrific work, we're, we're always just a little bit heartbroken because um, on the one hand, you know, it makes us feel so good to, to see this beautiful work. And on the other hand, it's like, wow, we're going to miss her when she's done with this course. So how else can At One support you? What would you like to see us develop to support faculty who are at the point that you are at? Um, I, I think it would be helpful, you know, um, maybe some how-to videos or in, in tutorials, you know, um, when, you know, for instance, Tracy mentioned, and, and it was presented in our lesson about Canva, and uh, though the lynda.com tutorial was helpful, it wasn't geared towards instructors. So I think it'd be helpful. Uh, John Murray contacted me because he, he enrolled in my class, and he said, where in, where in Canvas can I create you know, the, the headers that I created? And I had to tell him, it's not a Canvas thing. I use Canva. And um, I think that would be helpful, you know, some little tutorials on how to um, create some of these things that for me, real, I think that was a turning point for me. It really um, helped kind of organize things because I'm a visual person. And so every page, when I think Angela reviewed it the first time, was very um, independent of one another. And, you know, I used images to kind of jazz it up. But it wasn't until I had those headers that I felt like it was a very cohesive pay, a course. And it just kind of started evolving more from there. Once I could visually see the structure, uh, that it was all cohesive, 
So I think that would be helpful. Some, you know, here's, this is Canvas and maybe a shirt. This is how we can use it to create a header for your class or, you know, you use it for the next team, you know, that yeah. that, that would be helpful. Um, Cause I felt bad telling John Maria, I'm like, Oh, I use Canva, but without, without like saying, to really disclosing it took me like 12 hours, you know, playing with things and re, you know, <laughs> it was very deceptive. Like, Oh, I use Canva. <laughs> like a <laughs> little video that shows like, this is one way because, you know, sifting through all of those different layouts and yeah, you know, so, so little things like that, that um, the how to's, I think little instructional videos embedded um, or a separate course, you know, and I also see um, instructors that have a lot of pedagogical background and some very new teachers. So there might be, a, you know, a course where, you know, you may be teaching a lot, like I still benefited from all of that as well, but maybe that's, you know, minimize a little more of the how-to, you know, because everyone's coming with different um, experiences yeah. and needs of, um, of you know how to develop an on course uh, online course or how to update an online course so maybe an assessment of student you know where are you are you brand new to teaching and online instructor uh, instruction or you've been teaching for 20 years and now you're interested in online because that person's going to have a lot of classroom student interaction and for, um, experience but just the how-to's I think would be a good element to add yeah, excellent Thank you. Um, well, so we'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. Yes. Um, if you could, um, when, when this concludes and you leave the meeting, it will create the archive of the, the, work, the webinar, and then it will download the video onto your desktop. So have you done that before with, um, with Zoom? Mm -mm. Okay, so I'll have you go ahead and um, stop recording. Okay. So it's easiest if you stop screen sharing first, because then the, the stop recording button is more visible. I see. Oh, no, stop video. So stop share. Uh -huh. oh, I, okay. And now your stop recording button should be um, right there in your bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, menu. Okay, so stop. Um,